Hi, everyone. I guess we can start. So just take your seats. Um, by the way, uh, feel free to tweet uh, whatever you want during this session. I hope you'll have some fun. And uh, one disclaimer, it's not uh, about Kotlin, it's about gRPC, more about gRPC. Because I, I think that you heard a lot about Kotlin today, so I'm sorry, guys. Um, let's start. Today we are talking about how we can build microservices with Kotlin gRPC. And uh, in any other situation, in any other conference, I would say that I'm really happy that you chose my session, uh, despite there are a lot of sessions in parallel, uh, but I guess you had no choice, so let's skip this part. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Margarita. Uh, I'm software engineer at uh, Wix.com. By the way, uh, my company provided some prizes, and if you are active during this session, you'll get them, and you also can have some stickers. Here they are. Uh, so I'm active uh, community member. I'm a program committee of some conferences, speak at meetups, conferences, and so on. So you can contact me on Twitter and uh, some other stuff. One more very, very important thing that I want you to know about me, that I really enjoy boxing. So think twice before asking some tricky questions. And uh, today we'll talk about gRPC. Why gRPC and why should we uh, take a look into it? Then we'll talk about protobuf, its ideal used in gRPC. Then we'll implement some simple service, uh, talk about how we can handle errors, uh, how we can test, and then we'll discover more leaps specific for Kotlin. So why gRPC? I guess it's the main topic, because if you don't understand why should we use it, uh, there is no sense in my talk. Uh, first of all, please raise your hands, those of you who are writing microservices today. Don't be shy. Uh, I guess almost everyone writes microservices today, or at least thinks so. Uh, so why do we do microservices? Because they rock. They're independent, scalable. Uh, you can mix different technologies. You can do parallel development, and so on. You can, we can talk a lot about microservices pros. But uh, there are always one but. One big but. So the biggest issue in changing a monolith into microservice lies in changing the communication pattern. So communication is a pain. Uh, by the way, who said this? It's a question for a price. Yeah, present for, this, for that guy. I, I have some helpers for this. Oh. Unfortunately, someone hacked my presentation this morning, and uh, maybe we'll have some Star Wars stuff. Yeah, it was not Darth Vader, it was Martin Fowler. Uh, but don't be surprised if you see some was Star Wars star uh, slides, because I don't know why they appear there. And one more time, please raise your hands if you use HTTP 1 and REST today. Almost everyone who uses microservices use this pair. Actually, to be honest, in Wix, we also use microservices with REST and HTTP 1. Uh, we use a lot of uh, different technologies and these two as well. But at some point, when you have a lot of clients, for example, at Wix, we have 140 million of clients. It's more than millions of new users every week and uh, millions of requests. Uh, we need to have a lot of services. We need to somehow handle this all and need to pay much money to Amazon, Google Cloud, and at some point you understand that it's really a lot. Is there a way to somehow reduce your costs, to pay less, to maybe make your microservices more efficient and your com communication more efficient? So gRPC is one of these solutions. You can just uh, change your technologies, your communication, and benefit in it. Uh, why gRPC can help us? First of all, gRPC uses HTTP2. I won't say a lot about HTTP2, just let's look into its evolution. You see it's 91, 96, 97, then no progress, no progress, and still no progress, and they are not alive, we guess. And suddenly, are you kidding? Actually, I started going to school. I graduated from school. I started going to university. I graduated from my university. And only that HTTP2 appeared. So it means that the whole world changed. The whole internet changed. And only then HTTP2 appeared. I guess they had a lot of stuff to rework. And first of all, they finally opened one TCP connection per client. So uh, before this, 
HTTP 1, we all opened one TCP connection per request. But it's not really efficient, and it could be long, so uh, now we are opening only one connection. Then, according that we have one TCP connection and our client is connected to server, we can use bidirectional streaming because client can stream some data and can receive some data in stream. Uh, and it's really cool because now we don't need web sockets for streaming, we can use HTTP2. And in HTTP2, we also can provide flow control. Flow control is a really cool thing because almost every time your client and your server are not really compatible in the number of requests they can handle. For example, if your clients are produce too many requests and your server cannot handle it, you can um, have a problem, your server might be down, and in weeks, if something is down, we lose money. I guess in your company, you have the same situation. So losing money is not really good. Flow control is good. Uh, then, GPC also supports multiple languages. You just define your contract, and you can compile uh, your ideal into different languages. Uh, you can do it in Go, in a Node, in uh, Rust, in, uh, in Java, and, uh, and also GVM uh, languages. And uh, there are a lot of variants you can use uh, GPC. And of course, HTTP2 is binary, and GPC uh, uses protobuf for uh, his uh, definition of interfaces. And protobuf is also binary, so you do not send some text messages, you send bytes. And it's really cheap, and that's why GPC can make your communication more efficient and it could be faster. So in Wix, the company I work, uh, we like GPC. We like it really, really much. Uh, but, uh, there is one but always, we use Scala. Unfortunately, GRPC doesn't support Scala uh, natively. We need to use GRPC Java, and it's not really a good stack because we need to somehow handle incompatibility between Java and Scala. So there is a library called Scala PB, and it's really powerful, it's really cool, and we also built a lot of stuff upon that library, and uh, we are happy using GRPC and writing our code using this stuff. But we also have some in Wix, we have some people, some group of people, uh, for example, me and my friends, who like Kotlin, who want to use Kotlin and want to introduce it like one more language. And we decided to build like the same stuff for Kotlin and GRPC to enable our developers to write microservices in Kotlin. Unfortunately, it wasn't really simple stuff, so we are still working on it, and it's like we have a sandbox for it, but it's not in production yet. But uh, one day it will be. Uh, so for Kotlin, we do not have something like Scala PB. We need to write it on our own or need to somehow handle it. Uh, that's why my talk started, and let's proceed. Our next topic is protobuf. I already told you that we use protobuf for like ADL, interface definition in language. What is protobuf? According to Google, uh, protobuf protocol buffers are extensible mechanism for uh, serializing structured data. So it's like XML or JSON, but simpler, faster, and uh, smaller. Uh, how does it look? You should provide some proto file. In this proto file, you, in this proto file, you describe your service, your RPC calls, and then you just uh, decode what is your response and request is. Pretty simple. Then this proto file is compiled in any language you want, and you can use it in server and in client. In server, you should implement this method, and in client, you just, you just use it. Pretty simple. Um, so let's summarize what protobuf is. First of all, it's type safe, because it's compiled to your language, and you just use these classes of your language. Uh, then you cannot violate your schema, because it's compiled to your language and you just implement method. Uh, for example, in Java, if you did something wrong, you have compile time error. Uh, serialization, the serialization is fast because all messages are just bytes. And backward compatibility because uh, in version port above three, you, all your um, fields are optional. So it's easy to duplicate and easy to add new messages. But uh, the main disadvantage of protobuf is human readability. Actually, you see just bytes. Without proto file, you cannot understand what's happening. Uh, now let's finish a little talking and let's implement some simple service. Before implementing service, I 
again, have a question for you. Guys and girls, who knows what gRPC means? Do you have any answers? Okay, let's give him a present, this guy. And gRPC means gRPC remote procedure call. But actually, it's not true. <laughs> no, uh, let's hear, uh, it's okay. It's not true why. I have a friend working in Google, and he said that it was true for the first version, but then they decided to change it. So each version of gRPC has its own meaning of the first letter. Really smart solution, I, they think, yeah. So by the way, uh, Ruslan also have a present because he, he told this. Uh, let, let him give him a present. Uh, so I decided, what if we can help gRPC team and we can also create some new meanings of gRPC? Like good, green, and some graceful, grateful, uh, whatever you want. So task for this session. We'll implement voting chat. So it's chat application where you can post your messages. And if your message starts from gRPC, other uh, users can vote for it. So it's just send funny gRPC meanings and vote for them. Uh, you can also tweet with these hashtags. It's just for fun. And at the end of the session, we'll find out messages with the most votes and we'll give them prizes. Sounds fair. And I hope you'll enjoy this. Uh, by the way, we won't deploy application in this time because uh, I have no time to do the full cycle. So application is still running here. Uh, you, can, uh, you can already go there and try it. Uh, you can also observe my front-end skills. As a back-end developer, I have really cool front-end skills. You'll see. And uh, if you don't want to listen to my talk, you can actually uh, uh, play with this demo. So what about our, um, what about our application that we are developing? Uh, in our application, we have three main flows. First flow is when user joins chat. When user joins, we just send a subscribe to message stream from chat services, and chat service, uh, and we send join request to statistics service. Why should we do this? We subscribe for chat service because we want to send him some messages, and we want to receive some messages. It's bi-directional streaming. And we want to subscribe to statistics messages in order to receive updated statistics. And we want this to be asynchronously. So is it clear? Uh, pretty clear. So uh, the next uh, flow is user can chat. You can uh, send some message. So we're doing chat. Then we send chat message to chat service. And chat service also sends it to us because he need to notify all users so that new message appeared. And then chat service d does hacky things. If your message starts from gRPC, we send it to statistics service. And after that, statistics notifies client that statistics has changed. And the most interesting part is we can vote. When we vote, a uh, new vote is sent to vote service, and vote service uh, sends update request to statistics service, and statistics service updates our client. Pretty simple microservices architecture. Uh, it's OK. So let's implement this. Doing this, let's, uh, let's call this. Let's go to our IDE. Uh, first of all, we should start from protofile. Do you see it? Uh, as I already told you, to use gRPC, we need to use protobuf. And uh, you can see in protofile, we use chat service. And in this chat service, we can see a single method chat. This is bidirectional streaming. Why is bidirectional? Because uh, we have streaming in request and stream in response. And chat method is just a pair of uh, two fields from and content. Uh, so let's have a look into chat service implementation. Okay. So, um, as far as we do not have much time to do live coding, I have some trick. We are doing this stuff. 
and our chat service is implemented. Uh, so what does it do? First of all, oh, when we receive um, Stream Observer, we add it to our client's list. What does it mean? We do not immediately send some uh, response to our clients, but we add it to our listeners, and then when something changes, we will notify him. And then we should return also stream because our, uh, our call is bidirectional, and we also should receive stream. And in a method on next, we just describe what service does with the next message. So first of all, we log it, and then we notify all uh, our clients that uh, we have a new message. And after that, we are checking that gRPC starts from, our message starts from gRPC, and uh, if so, we notify our statistics. Uh, so next step, let's look into statistics service. So statistics service is here. Uh, statistics service has three methods. It's join, uh, add record, and add vote. And here you can see explanation of which message. Uh, you can see that join is server streaming because we just return stream and here is single call. And add record is and vo add vote are single records. Uh, let's implement this. So let's implement this. Uh, so first of all, let's implement join. It was really hard to implement this. First of all, we add our client to listeners in order to notify him them. And then we just notify all clients that something changed. Uh, notify clients, it's not really interesting stuff, so we just iterate over clients and send them on next message uh, and call on next. Uh, then in statistic service, we can add records. For adding records, uh, we are just uh, uh, adding records to our in-memory um, storage, and uh, then we notify clients that something changed. And we also return our response to response observer. And at vote uh, makes the same stuff. Uh, we also update our statistics and notify all clients. Uh, so we should return to our statistics, uh, to our chat service. Why should we do this? Uh, first of all, I haven't told you that in order to uh, have this, uh, to implement your PC call, we need to implement this uh, basic implementation, which is auto-generated from uh, prot above. And we also, uh, do we do? And then we have this method and we can override this. But uh, as you can see, our chat service is not only service, it just, it's also a client. We are a client for statistic service because we use statistic service over gRPC. In order to use statistic service, we need to somehow create a stub. Why stub? Because we can't call directly statistic service because it's other microservice. In order to make this stub, we just initialize channel uh, with some uh, target. And if it's uh, locally, we have this target. And if it's not locally, we have it from properties. Uh, so then we initialize that client, uh, the channel, and we create stop. Uh, there are different variants for stop. First of all, it's uh, simply new stop. If you do simply new stop, uh, here uh, we cannot just pass some parameters. We need uh, to pass some observer. So if you, if you can see. Uh, this, methods, uh, this method receives also stream observer, and in stream observer, we need to write method on next. Actually, it's not, it's not uh, the most convenient way to implement this, so we can use new future stop. Uh, new future, uh, if we use new future stop, we just pass uh, parameters, and we can return future. Because as you can see, uh, these calls returns listenable future. And we can make callback for this. And if we are using Kotlin coroutines extension, uh, we can just uh, make it work like coroutine, and that's all. Uh, and so, so let's return how it was. And uh, the third possible variant, we can use block and stop. Where is it? 
your blocking stop. A blocking stop it just block the thread until we have a response. It's uh, not really convenient because we need to block the thread and in Kotlin we try to do asynchronous, but sometimes you really need this. And if we do just implement this, we uh, see that this just add record response. So let's return to our presentation. We made some first step for our microservice, and we discovered single calls, server streaming, bidirectional streaming. We saw simple stop, blocking stop, and future stop. Uh, for further information, you can uh, talk to me after the session. Uh, then let's talk about error handling. Uh, all happy families are alike. Each and happy family is unhappy in its own way. Whose words are these? Uh, okay, I guess this guy was the first, and this is his price. Yeah, this is Leo Tolstoy from Anna Karenina. Uh, what does it mean? If your gRPC request was okay, you just receive okay, and you don't care if something is wrong. But if you have an error, you can have multiple different variants of errors, and it's just errors from uh, the platform. What about your custom exceptions? Sometimes you don't have errors from the network, but you have errors from your business logic. So if your service, uh, through an exception, you return status code unknown. It's OK, but uh, sometimes you need some more information. How to do this? You can return proper status in interceptor. Uh, for this, you should write an interceptor for gRPC and intercept call uh, with method intercept call. Uh, and then we just uh, substitute uh, status with what we need, add some description and some other stuff, and that's all. Now you have proper, uh, proper status code. And after that, you can handle it whatever you want, for example, like this. Uh, so testing. Testing is uh, a must. And if you don't test, the trader will come for you, and it'll be bad. Uh, so uh, unit testing. For unit testing, gRPC provides us with in-process server builder and in-process channel builder. Uh, so you can uh, initialize it in setup method and create a uh, server with in-process server builder and channel with in-process channel builder. So you don't need any port, you don't need any target because it's in-process. Um, then you should not forget to clean up. And in after, you should, um, in after method, you should uh, shut down for server and for channel. And let's write test. Uh, so we have some preconditions, not really interesting. We create message, we mock uh, observer, and we can see that we send message with some content, then we uh, and trigger method on next with this content, and we assert that content is this. So writing tests for gRPC is pretty simple, even if it is streaming. What about integration and end-to-end -end tests? I'm looking for this uh, many times. I googled for it. I asked many guys, and what I found out that may the force be with you. Why? Because there is no really unique uh, or some unified uh, way to write integration or end-to-end -end tests. But in Wix, we write them a lot, uh, and we use uh, and we use some uh, like approach called test kits. What does it mean? If you made a dev star, I mean, if you made some service. You need to provide some stuff to test it, some mocked stuff, not mocked stuff, almost real stuff. And uh, you provide this test kit, and your client, when he joins you and uses your call, he can um, test it easily. Because he just calls your test kit, and he doesn't know how to mock it and how to do this. He just uses your test kit. Uh, it's really helpful for us, and at Wix, Wix we use a lot of test kits. Um, Let's summarize a little about test testing. Uh, we can write unit tests. We can deal with streaming easily. Uh, there is no unified approach for IT and end-to-end -end tests, but uh, in Wix, test kit approach works well. So you can, uh, we can talk about it later. Uh, and the most interesting part is more leaps for Kotlin. Uh, who are we? We are Kotlin developers, actually. What do we want? We want to use channels in gRPC. I uh, talked a lot about stream observers. But stream observer is not a thing we want to deal with in Kotlin. We want to deal with channels. We want to use coroutines. 
I will also want to use deferred. We want, don't, don't want to use listenable future because listenable future is not the best future. I saw. We want to use deferred. But do we want to contribute? No. Uh, so when I wanted to introduce uh, Kotlin in our company and I wanted to use some specific library for Kotlin, I thought I'll have these robots which will help me, which will save my life in all situations, which can uh, even save the world, all three robots. But unfortunately, I have this one. I have these uh, like, uh, robots who cannot even uh, shot anyone in eight episodes. Uh, so I tried to, tried to look into this library specific for Kotlin. I tried this one. Uh, it looks pretty cool because it sounds GRPC Kotlin and they thought it's official Kotlin library. But uh, is it, uh, <laughs> are you serious? 002. And it's just early prototype, wasn't tested in production. And when I showed it to my teammates, they, saw, they told me, are you crazy? Do you really want to use it? So uh, we skip this library. Uh, next uh, library I wanted to introduce was Crota Plus. Uh, Crota Plus is really the plugin I like very much. It's a great plugin for building together coroutines, protobuf, gRPC, and uh, be happy. Unfortunately, this plugin is also no, was not released, so it's also version 0.1.3, but it's not 0.0.2. Like, and um, I saw some communication with Elizarov and the author of this plugin. Maybe there are some movements in that way. So let's look a little into the examples. What can we do? Uh, using Crota Plus, we should not create messages using Builder. We can use Lambdas. Pretty cool. Uh, we can also uh, get all of these benefits from coroutines because methods that are generated are suspend methods. And that's why we can do a sync await stuff without listenable features. Uh, we also can create some uh, messages without uh, to builders. We use only lambdas. And the most prettiest thing I see is that we have operator merge. It's like plus. And you can uh, have one entity plus another entity, and they will be merged. So one day we'll have proper Kotlin support. I, I hope for this. So takeaways I want you to um, take from my presentation. First of all, uh, use gRPC for effective communication. Doesn't matter whatever it's Kotlin, Go, Python, Java, you use it because it's cool. And then gRPC plus Kotlin can be used today. It's not ideal, but it works and uh, it will be improved in the future. Then we are waiting for proper coroutine support, We're waiting, hoping for this and feel free to contribute. It's, uh, it will be really cool if you contribute to it and we'll be happy uh, sooner. So this is my gRPC Kotlin sandbox. It's not the best code I ever written, but you can look into it, use something, and uh, there are different uh, like types of gRPC. I try to use it with Node. I try to use Kotlin JS. Uh, like when I have time, I contribute there. And let's define winner. <laughs> I guess there is uh, someone with 23, anonymous 732. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> uh, I think you have to choose another one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can um, go after the session and uh, receive his prize. <laughs> <laughs> you can go here and grab your. <laughs> Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, I guess uh, that's all. There are no more winners. And uh, let's return to our presentation. Uh, so, thank you for your time and for your attention. And questions? Yeah, thank you. We have one. <laughs> We have time only for one question, so uh, question. And uh, what about rate limiting and balancing with, uh, when you're dealing with gRPC? We have some tools for HTTP to deal with that, so can you comment 
What about rate limit? Uh, can you please repeat because I didn't. How you can deal with rate limiting and balancing? I think it's like uh, request load. I mean load like balancing. Uh, yeah. Yes, you can do this if you're seeing in my code. Um, you can use in, for example, I deployed my applications into Kubernetes and uh, I used uh, their built-in load balancer, but you also can uh, develop your own and you can use it into a channel. When you create a channel, you just provide with your own load balancer. Okay, good. So, so that's all. All other questions, please find the speaker and ask your questions. So thank you.